Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here with one more, one more, and then I'm done. I promise you. Listen, the one thing that I want to share with you, especially you pastors, you leaders, you choir directors, you musicians, all of you, when you see there's a member, whether they're of your particular ministry or group, or under the whole, you know, just a member of the congregation, even if it's your own child. If you see that they are functioning in a way that's diametrically opposed to God's holiness or his standards of holiness and modesty, what you have to do at that point is sit them down. I don't care how good they sing. I don't care how good they preach. I don't care how good they work them drums, the organ, the piano. I don't care how good they are. I don't care if they're the choir director or the pastor's daughter or son. Sit them down, baby. Nobody needs to be in God's pulpit being of service to the Lord working under things that are consecrated to the Lord in holiness, living an unrighteous life, willful sin. Let me tell you this. Now, I'm not being judgmental. I want you to understand what I mean. There was a point I walked with the Lord in righteousness, holiness, and genuineness. But like many of you, I slipped on myself too. And when I found myself falling short, I would not preach. I told the chaplain at the prison, at the prison ministry I used to go to, I told him, I said, I need to talk to you. Um, I love what I do, but I've gotten a little sideways, and I want to make sure I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the victory and stay straight before I get back up in that pulpit. I don't want to preach if my if my walk isn't straight like it's supposed to be. Nobody had to sit me down. I sat myself down. I don't play with God. And we all get in a certain position where we get a little out of control or we get a little weak or whatever. I mean, you know, that's why I thank God for Jesus. But we don't park there, set up camp there, move there, move our address there, living in, in an unholy lifestyle. We should steadily be working, fighting tooth and nail to get back on track. Satan lays snares for us. And yes, we get caught up in them sometimes. But you shouldn't be relaxed with it. It should break your heart that you messed up. When I messed up, it broke my heart. I cried my eyes out and messed up again and cried my eyes out. But when I got it together, I got back up in that pulpit. Do you hear what I'm saying? It wasn't even a church. It was a prison. But it was God's work. And it was, to me, just as important as being up in the church in the pulpit. A pulpit is a pulpit. Whether you're at the park preaching to homeless, whether you're at a mission, or whether you're standing up in a church or a major cathedral or on TV. If you're slipping and sliding, if you're tripping over your own two feet, sit your little behind down and wait till you get the victory and fight for that victory and make sure you got people you confide in and, and, and confess to and have them pray over you. You don't sit there and hide your sin or hide your not. No, you don't play that because if you hide yours, God will expose you. But if you expose yourself, God will keep you covered till you get the victory. Don't play with them. He knows when you're serious and he knows when you're playing him for a patsy. Now, that's all I have to say about that. Sit your people down when you know they're slipping and sliding, even if they don't mean to. If they're falling sideways and you know that they're not, you know, they don't have the victory, that they've slipped and they're still trying to get up and dust themselves off, you sit them down and let them take a break so they can really concentrate on them. Because you don't want people ministering to the saints through a dirty hose. You wouldn't want somebody giving you an old muddy, nasty cup and then pouring nice clean water in it and telling you, here's some water to drink. Well, how do you think God feels? We are supposed to be blessing and feeding his people and ministering to his people 
and we got dirt on us. No. You know, my friend was telling me a story today when we went to the restaurant. She said that there was a woman that was at a church who was a prophet. She had the gift, not a prophet, but she had the gift of prophecy that worked in her life. And her pastor had the gift of discernment. And they had an evangelist at their church preaching. Check this out. They had an evangelist. He was fine. He was tall. He was together. He had personality, charisma. I mean, he was so tough. Everybody loved hearing him preach. But when he was walking down the aisle, she saw a vision. And in the vision, now she's looking at him in the natural, but in the vision, she sees dirty footprints behind him, all in the carpet, all the way down as he walked up into the pulpit to preach. Dirty footprints, like muddy footprints. And she knew she had to tell the pastor. So when the service was over, she went to the pastor and told him. The pastor said, I'll pray on it. Thank you very much for letting me know that. In the meantime, the pastor had already had his own suspicions because he was picking up signals from the Holy Spirit through the spirit of discernment, through the gift of discerning of spirits. And he was starting to feel like something was right with this guy. And she confirmed what he was getting from the Lord. So next thing you know, you never saw that brother again. He never, he was supposed to preach that whole week. That ended that. That pastor shut that down. That man never got back up in his pulpit. He wasn't a member of the church. He was a guest speaker. So that's why the pastor didn't know what kind of life he was living because he wasn't a member of that church. But when the Lord revealed it to him and confirmed it through a woman through the gift of prophecy and a word of knowledge, the man said, oh, no, 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 that brother ain't mounting this pulpit, living a dirty life, never again. And he put a stop to that man preaching in his church because he would not have a dirty vessel feeding the saints, something that's supposed to be holy and consecrated to the Lord. All right, think about that. All of you leaders, all of you people in the church, and you know somebody's not living nothing. Now listen, here's another thing. And I know some of y'all going to hate me for it. But, you know, just you, you believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. I go by the Bible. I don't go by opinion. Okay, and the Bible says man shall not lay with man and woman shall not lay with woman. It says that. In the Levitical law, it says it. In the New Testament, it says it too. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this is what I want to tell you. When you see, you church members, when you see somebody, you know they're living. Now, I'm not talking about a gay person or an effeminate person or a masculine woman that just associates with that, but they're not living it. They're living a holy life. And it's just taking them a while to readjust the way they present themselves, but they are living celibate. Celibate. They have a right to serve God. But the ones who are living, living, an unsaved, homosexual, heterosexual, adulterous, fornicating, uh, whatever, pedophilia, all of those. If you're in a situation where you know somebody in your church is living loose and living dirty, they're not to serve in your church. Sorry, Charlie, but that's the way it is. That's the principle of the Lord. You live a holy life. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You're not holy nor acceptable when you're living an unclean lifestyle. You're living like a sinner, proclaiming like a saint. And then you think that God is okay with a tainted offering of your services. No, he doesn't play that. Love you. Pray about it.
If you have issues with it, look it up in the Bible. I will put up scriptural references later. Right now, I'm just putting up the video, and it takes time to get all that other stuff done. I'll do that before the week is up. God bless you.